hello and welcome back to my channel 5 minute economics where i teach economic concepts in a span of just 5 minutes so firstly a very happy new year to all of you this is my first video for 2021 and of course many more to come and secondly a big thank you to all of you for helping me reach 1000 subscribers which is a big milestone for me so yeah thank you and now coming to today's video which is the ISLM model in this video i'll be talking about the introduction and the background of the ISLM model the breakdown of ISLM model as well as the shifts in IS and LF curves respectively and lastly about the pros and cons of the model so yeah let's get started so coming to the introduction so you would be surprised to know that many people don't know the full form of the ISLM model so please keep that in mind IS stands for investment savings whereas LM stands for liquidity preference money supply this is a keynesian macroeconomic model which shows how the market for economic goods interacts with the money market after keynes published his magnum opus which is theory of employment interest and money this model was further developed by john hicks in 1937 and later the same model was extended by Alvin Hansen and hence this model is also referred to as the Hicks Hansen model at times so now further i'll be breaking down the ISLM before i move on to the working of the ISLM i would like to explain each component firstly coming to investment so investment is defined as a quantity of goods purchased in a period of time that are not consumed or used at that very time when the investment goes up the interest rate goes down they both are inversely proportional secondly coming to savings so savings are that part of income which is not spent we all know that right when the interest rate falls the savings also falls because as households they tend to take the advantage of the low interest rates and make purchases and hence their savings go down next coming to liquidity so it is the demand for and the amount of real money in all forms those who part with liquidity may be in the form of savings or maybe in the form of investments they are rewarded through interest payments and dividends and lastly coming to money so money is what money does any verifiable record that can be used as a means of paying for goods and services is termed as money so moving ahead to the is and the lm curves so firstly coming to the is curve it describes the goods market it slopes downward to the right you know it is somewhat similar to the shape of the demand curve this downward slope depicts that as interest rate falls people and business they invest more in cars and houses i just explained to you that interest rates and investment both have an inversely proportional relationship moving ahead also i told you as interest rate falls people put less in savings and more in consumer goods they have a directly proportional relationship so basically thus the effect of the falling interest rate in the economy is that there is an increase in the gdp leading to an increase in investment and fall in savings now coming to the lm part lm describes the money market it slopes upward to the right somewhat similar to the shape of the supply curve and as the economy expands banks need funds to support investment for that added you know investment they tend to encourage people to deposit more and more of cash in the banks for long term deposits like bonds and you know certificate of deposits so basically what they're trying to convey is that is and lm both have opposing forces how well, they are showing that as the interest rate falls here we notice the economy expands and when the economy over here we see expands there is a rise in interest rates that is why both of them have opposing forces the point at where the is and the lm curve meet at this point the you know the market is in equilibrium and this is the point where the market is balanced and this is known as the equilibrium point so moving ahead guys i'll be explaining the shifts in the is and the lm curve so two exogenous factors which are the level of autonomous spending and the real money supply tend to affect the is and the lm curve right now we will be studying about the shift in the is curve so we notice that when autonomous spending which is you know the government spending it increases the output increases as well as the interest rate increases which leads to an rightward shift of the is curve we can see this diagrammatically we have real gdp on the x axis as well as the interest rate on the y axis initially we see the is and the lm curve which are in red they intersect at point e at this point we have r and y as a interest rate and real gdp respectively 
but due to autonomous spending there is a shift or there is a rise in the output and interest rates we notice that when they expand our is curve shifts rightward and we now see that r moves from r to r dash and y is now from y to y dash here we have to see one thing lm is fixed is shift rightward and both r and gdp rise also, this is the case of an expansionary fiscal policy. Don't get confused because next I'll be talking about the expansionary monetary policy. So an expansionary fiscal policy basically tends to increase the output and interest rate and shifts the IS curve rightward. Moving ahead to the shift in the LM curve. In this case, our exogenous factor is the real money supply. So we notice when the money supply rises, which is regulated by the RBI, we notice that the interest rate tends to fall and the output tends to rise, leading to a rightward shift in the LM curve. Coming here diagrammatically, again, we have interest rate on y-axis and real GDP on the x-axis. We notice when the money supply in the economy increases, the interest rate falls from R to R dash, and whereas the real GDP rises from Y to Y dash, our equilibrium shifts because our LM has now moved rightward, our equilibrium shifts from E to E dash. In this case, we notice the IS curve is fixed, whereas the LM shifts rightward. Please notice the interest rate is falling and the output is rising in this case. And this is the case of an expansionary monetary policy. I'll be attaching the links of the monetary and fiscal policy in the comment section below so you can have a look in case of any doubt. So lastly, I'll be talking about the pros and cons of this model. Firstly, coming to the pros. This model explains the Keynesian macroeconomic model on a basic level. Secondly, it is a good and useful tool for policy making. Next, coming to the cons, it has somewhat taken very simplistic and unrealistic assumptions about the money supply as well as the market. It doesn't talk much about the international market, the inflation and the rational expectations. And lastly, Hicks himself had mentioned that this is best used as a classroom model rather than in practical application. So that's all about the ISLM model, guys. Thank you so much for watching my video. Please do like this video and subscribe to my channel. And I hope to see you in the next video pretty soon.